Grayson Schmitz of Top Chef Seasons 9 and 13. Thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me. What's on the menu? So we are making braised veal cheeks. Veal with, cheeks. Yep. With now, a, is that uh, cheeks or? You're not even going to let me say what we're making. <laughs> Definitely face cheek. Face cheek. So, so these first, come from veal, you said, which is yes, a baby is cow, veal. right? Exactly. Okay. Wow. Yeah, Look yeah. at you, huh? <laughs> Anyways, we're going to season these with salt and pepper. Our pan is already getting hot, so. Why cheeks? What do you like about cheeks that makes them so good? I like cheeks personally because they're very tender. I even mentioned before that you might need some wine to cook with. Yes. So this is the wine that we're having today. It's a uh, wine from the south of Italy. Even though, I, I don't know if this is a southern dish. Right? I have like all sorts of genres. Influence to the dish. Yeah. Cool. So now we're going to add our mirepoix. What is mirepoix? Saute that a little bit. Um, it is carrots, celery, and onion. Ah, okay. Add a little bit of tomato paste. Tomato paste. Yep. Okay. And caramelize that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're gonna use your wine to deglaze all There of it is. I've done my part. Okay, you can pour, uh -oh. pour some in. How much? I'll, I'll tell you when to stop. Okay. Keep going. That's Glasses it. are fogging up. Yeah? Okay, good. Yep. Okay, we didn't use too much. I was getting a little nervous there. <laughs> <laughs> we actually have some veal stock back here. Veal stock. That's already yeah. heated up. Takes okay, these days. potatoes are actually done, so I'm just going to put these over here, and we will get to that in a second. Stand out of your way so it doesn't <laughs> burn. Okay, now we're going to add the cheeks back in. All right, covered our cheeks. Yep, so now we are <laughs> going to throw it in a 300 to 325 degree oven. Okay. That's going to be about two and a half hours. You know how to peel a potato, right? So you can just do it with a knife, you're saying? Yeah. Boy. Boy, that's really freaking hot. Oh, yeah, you yeah. can do it. Come on. Holy shit. <laughs> If you can get through one, we can like show yeah. what's happening. Holy crow, it's <laughs> While you're doing hot. that. I got it done. That looks huh? awesome, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. You want to do another one? I'm a pro. Sure, it. yeah. Now you're feeling good, huh? Yeah. Okay, so we have cream and butter in here. I'm going to get that heating up. Cream and butter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that would probably, probably be the French, so the French in the dish right there, right? Now we are going to food mill this. Yeah, yeah. My mom didn't have a food mill when I grew up. Did, I never even, did I never she even have heard a ricer? No, no. Yeah, she did. I'm pretty sure she didn't, but. Oh, I like feel. Like for mashed potatoes, you used to yeah. use the, like, like a hand mixer. Oh, a hand mixer. Yeah, that's okay. how we used to make mashed potatoes. We'll just get the bottom part here. Okay. Nice. So this is our cream and butter. Cream and butter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're just going to add a little bit. It's like a very traditional French jam. Okay, got so it. You can start grating that. That side is okay? Now use this side. Looking good, huh? How much of this you and want me to shave? And then you season this with salt and pepper. You can keep going. Got my rhythm down now. This is actually Comte. Comte, I know that. I know that. Yeah, I love that I know cheese you know Jura. That's, that's your my favorite, that's my right? all-time favorite cheese. Yeah, I love I love Comte. See how it's like nice and stringy. Yeah, cheesy yeah. mashed potatoes. Yeah. That's what we would call them as a kid. We're gonna check in the cheeks. Yep. Wow, that looks great. So this is actually the cheeks. Everything that was in the braise, take all of the rest of the ingredients mm -hmm. in that pot and put it through the food mill. And then that's your sauce. And that's your sauce. That seems like it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy. Like gravy. Okay. okay. So. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna do one plop in the middle, that and then great. kind of make a divot for mm -hmm. our cheeks. Mm -hmm. Put one of the cheeks in the center. A little bit of sauce. Wow, that looks great. This is gonna be our garnish. We have a little bit of gremolata. So basically, I what is like gremolata? Herbs and lemon. Okay. So I basically brunoise the zest of the lemon. Okay. So that just goes on top of our cheek. Cool. And then a little bit of toasted hazelnut. Some toasted hazelnut. Awesome. And that's it. That looks great. It's getting to the, to the point where I'm getting very thirsty. <laughs> so um, the wine that I selected for us comes from the heel of the Buddha's in an area called Puglia. This Very is um, lush, I would say. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> so this is made from a grape called Primitivo. Uh -huh. and it's rich, you know, a little more fruit forward in style, but have good tannins. And with this dish, I think you need a wine that has for sure some tannin because you have so much, so much fatty stuff going on in mm -hmm. here. But also I think since there's a lot of earthy components in this dish, mm -hmm. I think having and some like fruit brightness. in the wine. Yeah. yeah. Having some fruit in the wine to balance that out too is my thoughts at least. So that smells Perfect. It smells good, right? For this, yeah. Yeah. 
Let's give it a try. Wow, it's good. Good wine, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're going to like that. That's great. Wow. Really good. It's, it's like a texture to that. He's going to add some crunch because it's a pretty yeah. like, soft textured dish. Yeah. Really great. Like alone, it was a little too intense right. for me. Yeah. But with this, it's perfect. Permitivo and cheeks. Yeah. I think it's a winning combination. I think so too. Yeah. Good pairing, sir. Right. Thanks, Grayson. I think that the cool thing about finding wines from other states and lesser known, lesser appreciated areas is you're able to get in at the entry level. When you're discovering wines like this, they represent great value.